Hello and welcome. My name is James from the DSO Imager channel and tonight I'm going to go ahead and show you my workflow on uh, M17 also known as the Swan Nebula. Now I uh, use the AT115 EDT and my one-shot color camera the ASI 533 MC. I have that 533 on that scope uh, to capture the eclipse that took place a little while ago and uh, decide to leave it on there and uh, see how my um, AT-115 worked with a one-shot color camera because to date so far I've only shot mono on that scope with uh, ASI 1600. Now the weather down here has been pretty bad. Uh, it, apparently all over the world we're getting terrible uh, astronomy weather. Uh, lots of uh, cloudy nights, some admittedly badly needed rain for this area and a string of clear nights with uh, high winds. Uh, but we managed to get enough of uh, clear nights that I was able to knock out uh, a little over 10 hours on M17 with this setup. So as you can see there, it's 316 uh, sub-exposures, uh, two minute subs each. All right, so let's take a look. Now here, is what it looked like straight out of uh, straight after stacking. Now this is not stretched this is just uh, auto stretched with unlinked channels and I mean right out of the gate it looks pretty good. Nice smooth data on there. I mean there's really very little noise in this picture. Here's the same shot only with dynamic background extraction applied. Still in the linear state and uh, still actually really clean. So actually the way the workflow goes is that uh, we get this before I do anything I do a dynamic crop uh, and that's just to eliminate the um, stacking artifacts that you get to the edge. Uh, so after running dynamic background extraction, I'll do color calibration. And here's the result. We're still, we are still uh, linear. Uh, if you hear that tone, that is a cloud on oh, my rig. Give me one second here. Yeah, it was supposed to be uh, uh, bad tonight, uh, but there were no clouds. And I kicked off my rigs and I got about an hour and a half in and it looks like those clouds rolled in. So... I'll keep an eye on that while I record this. But anyway, uh, so yeah, this is uh, color calibration here. Uh, we're still linear. And what I did is, all I do with this is I just go to color calibration. I first do a background neutralization. I don't, I leave all the settings default and just drag and drop it on there. And then I go to color calibration and uh, do that. Now, alternatively, I could do photometric cal uh, color calibration, uh, and that actually, let's see. So here it is without uh, any color calibration applied to it. And if you use uh, photometric, you acquire the uh, location information from the image. It should be in your metadata file or the, the header and then you um, hit this here apply and it will plate solve this image and do a photometric color calibration and this process does include um, uh, background neutralization so we'll let this run it shouldn't take too long And there we go. So photometric color calibration or regular cal color calibration usually yields the uh, same results. Uh, I do find that photometric color calibration can really help uh, with galaxies. But anyway, um, we'll go on. 
Now, after uh, color calibration, I will split the luminance from the color image. And I'll run deconvolution against this. And so that's what I did here. Uh, if you're curious on um, seeing how I use uh, deconvolution, uh, check out my video on deconvolution on my channel. It's a great walkthrough and explains the whole process. Uh, but anyway, if we zoom in, there you can see mostly the difference in the stars. So before, after. Now after I do deconvolution on the luminance layer, uh, I go ahead and stretch both the luminance and the color. Uh, in this case, I just use the uh, Easy Processing Suite Soft Stretch. And then I apply the luminance to the color image and uh, I ended up with this right there. And so after that, I'll remove the stars using Star Exterminator. And there's our starless image and here's our stars. So, I mean, honestly, this looks pretty good already. I, I mean, it doesn't need that much work. Uh, but I like the detail that I was getting in that nebulosity, and I decided to see how much uh, I can push it. And perhaps I pushed it too much, uh, but you can be the judge of that. All right, so I did some curves work, and I ended up with this, at least initially. And I wanted to pull some more out, so I decided to use uh, HDR Multiscale Transform. And what you can see out of that you can see I worked through this a little bit. Uh, this uh, option here, Number of Layers, this is your main control. Uh, the default to 6. I sometimes find that 6 is a little bit too strong. Uh, and taking it up to seven on a lot of my images uh, seems to work pretty well. So uh, this one here is with six and this one here is with seven. And it does a nice job of creating a lot of contrasts in there. Although this is still, in my opinion, a little bit too hard, too harsh for both of these. Uh, so what I did is I used pixel math and just simply added each of these with with the with the original file and I ended up with um, oops here with this original file and it ended up with two different choices so that's what this image 33 and image 35 are and I decided to um, take the results that I got from this one and I believe this is with the number of layers at seven and then add it to the original image. This is the one that I decided to work with. So let's uh, step through uh, the processing uh, that I did here. You can see I got a mask on there already and it's mostly curves work at this point. Oh right here see the darker areas uh, in the nebulosity uh, this is using that uh, script uh, Enhance Dark, I think it's called, Utilities, Dark Structure Enhance, right? So all that does is it just helps give you a little bit of um, uh, contrast in those dark areas. There, there we go. So I thought that made a nice, nice difference. And so here we are working with curves. I feel like maybe I went a little bit too much on saturation because my image ended up really red. We're doing an invert there. And uh, I pretty much ended up at this point uh, before I decided to try adding the stars back in. And so I moved copies over to a new workspace and here we go. So this is our starless. I did a little bit more work on it. Let's uh, uh, actually all I did was just rename it. <laughs> and uh, there's our stars. 
Let's step through the process here. Basically, what I'm trying to do with the stars is de-emphasize them. Even though this is broadband with a color camera, uh, you still get a little bit of a green bias in the stars. And so here, we I just use curves to pull back and I boost saturation and I remove green from them and that's what I end up with. And our final image is this right here. So I'd love to hear what you guys think on this one. Did I uh, overcook this one a little bit too much or not? Uh, I think it came out pretty decent and uh, it's a good example of what you can get I think with that uh, AT115 EDT and a uh, one-shot color camera such as this ASI 533MC. Uh, so I've got nothing else uh, for tonight. So um, hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And clear skies.